Six years ago, I was very pregnant and very alone. I wanted to get away, and that's why I chose Yellowknife. When I arrived here, it was the dead of winter. It was pitch black for almost 20 hours a day. And for me at that time in my life, it felt like a good place to hide. I had my baby on the 24th of March, right after spring solstice, when we start getting more daylight every single day. This is mom stuff that I'm keeping just to remind me of my baby. I didn't find out the sex when I was pregnant because it just was not a thing that ever mattered. But I was quite relieved when this baby was placed in my arms and the doctors told me that I had a boy. Tell me about the baby. Mm. I don't know what pronouns to use. I would keep it in the pronouns of the story. So to use he, okay. But I feel like my loyalty to my child is compromised when I do that. Keep in mind that we'll talk about why that changes. Okay. Nobody saw him. He was behind my legs. He wouldn't talk to people. People would greet him and he might growl a little bit. Sometimes he would bark or he wouldn't speak at all. He was a doormat and I worried for him. In his first year of preschool, we were shopping for an outfit for this Christmas concert. Are you in a tunnel? Everything that I picked up was no, no, nothing was working, nothing was exciting. And suddenly, all I can hear is this teeny tiny voice saying, Mama, come here. So I went to where he was standing and I saw him looking up at this sparkly silver dress. And I said, are you sure? And we bought the dress, and the first thing that he did was put it on and ask for a photograph to be taken. That night, he went on stage and was as happy as could be. And I saw something that night that I had not seen in my child, which was confidence. Shortly thereafter, he wanted a dress that he could wear to school. I found a little dress that kind of just looked like a long sweater. And going to school that morning, I put a pair of jeans and a t-shirt in his backpack. When I picked him up, I expected to see him in jeans and the t-shirt. Instead, I found my child playing with a few little girls who loved his new dress. <laughs> so it started with those few things and hair clips and ponytails and the sparkly shoes that he wore to the Christmas concert that he now wore to school every single day. I had always said before I had children, I would let my boy wear a dress. Why wouldn't I? 
But now, I was feeling very insecure. When people saw him sitting in the grocery cart with frets in his hair and his nails painted, they would usually just run away. We were in the car one day. I was a little bit stressed. It was cold, and I just needed a second of quiet. And from the back seat, this little voice said, Mom, do you know that I'm really a girl? I said, I'd love you even if you were an elephant. It doesn't matter to me. And I felt myself screaming in my head, no, 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 no. I thought about all of these hateful things that people think and feel. And I thought, not my baby. Holly Pepper, she's the sweetest, most loving buddy. And do you want to see the coolest Lego set in the whole wide world? Well, right now is your chance. He started asking to use different pronouns. And after stumbling over gender neutral pronouns, I finally bit the bullet. People avoided me. I avoided everybody. I kept thinking, this is just temporary. I can do this for a week. I can do this for a month. Everything's going to go back to normal. She asked for her name to be changed. And her teacher changed the name on her cubby at school. And she did the right thing. But I wasn't ready for it. I wasn't ready to pick my child up from school and see someone else's name. I had a lot of people question how does my three-year-old even know what gender is? And I had people say, oh, it's because you're a single mom and there's no dad in the house. And I thought, well, maybe. I knew that she knew who she was when I saw all of the risks that she was taking. A lot of the children were accepting and just as many were not. There were little boys who would wait until the teacher was busy and find her to tell her that what she was doing was wrong. There were a lot of tears, and I kept reassuring her, if this is not something that you want to do, you don't have to. And that was not an option for her. It was easier for her to be ridiculed than living in a way that was not authentic. And that was a really beautiful thing to see. Researcher and 
Also a vet. Yeah, you love animals, don't you? Yeah. Do you remember when you first told your mom? About me being transgender. Um, it felt really, really good, and I was really happy that she let me be who I was on the inside. For her fifth birthday, she received her brand new birth certificate and her brand new health card with her name on it. Here. Suddenly, I had a child who was social and excited to participate in life. There came a time when we decided that the best thing for her was to come out to neighbors, to friends, so she's not getting misgendered and people aren't using the wrong name every time that they see her. Greetings, friends and neighbors. Some of you may already known or have guessed, my child has been going through a bit of a change over the past year, or maybe even longer. Being a boy just didn't feel right. The process of determining whether or not a child is just going through a phase is a long one. And for quite some time, my child has very clearly identified as female. Could this change tomorrow? Maybe, but probably not. So what happens now? We are still the same people and we still have the same family. What I had been grieving before was the loss of my son. And what I'm grieving now is never knowing her before. I missed her first birthday. I missed her first steps. And when she talks about her transition, she always says, when you let me be a girl. And if I feel guilty about anything, it's that. I've spent the last six months reading every book, every article, watching every documentary. I've talked to many child psychologists, doctors, and pediatricians. Everyone says the same thing, that it is so important to support your child if they feel this way. A Trevor Project online survey found that more than 50% of trans and non-binary youth in the U.S. considered attempting suicide in 2020. I had one doctor look at me in the eye and very clearly say, you can have a happy daughter or a dead son. to carry the responsibility of keeping her out of places that might not be safe. Every play date, every extracurricular activity, every birthday party where she's out of my care, every moment where she might have to use the washroom, where somebody might walk in. We have a sign at our pool that says, anyone over the age of seven must use the change room of their assigned gender. I have to stand up and make the difficult phone calls, and I have to be your advocate because that's who I am now. Thomas the Teddy took a deep breath. I need to be myself, Errol. In my heart, I've always known that I'm a girl teddy, not a boy teddy. I wish my name was Tilly, not Thomas. Is that why you've been so sad, Errol asked? I don't care if you're a girl teddy or a boy teddy. So what if you really aren't comfortable with this? What if this goes against the moral fabric of your being? No problem. I will give you the same amount of respect that I hope to get in return. We are very lucky to have friends in our lives who have supported us along the way. We've also had friends and family members leave along the way. Those spaces continue to be filled by people as well. We have an amazing team of shelters in our community. 
I'm a little worried that someday someone will find out and tell like a whole bunch of people. Why? What do you think would happen if lots of people knew? Um, I think they would probably make fun of me. We have a rule in our house that we don't tell anybody new without telling each other first. This isn't secret. It's just about privacy. Sometimes I think of it like a dream, like a dream that I had. I gained a whole person. I want people to look at her and see. There's the little girl who loves to sing and dance. That's the little girl who loves dinosaurs and who knows more about outer space than some adults. Kind, special, pretty, cool. That's how I would describe myself. Do you want to go down together or do you want to go down side by side? How would you describe your mom? Um. How about we go side by side? You yeah. Side. Smart, helpful. Okay, hang on, wait for me. Um, okay. Kind. A little scared on high things. <laughs> I don't know if she really actually had fun on that slide. I feel lucky that she felt safe enough to tell me who she is. <laughs> and that I get to experience this magical person. <laughs> Once we stepped out into the world, it felt like we were free. <laughs> 